Tell her about there's still life ahead. Better life than this. This one here is just a shadow. This one is what? A shadow. Many of you here, you are so weak by faith. You, you, you don't think anybody can face any challenge. Because the Bible says we must face challenges, all of us. And, but there's a way that God will make a way of making us to overcome. So it was very bad for us to, to see something like that happening. But it has been happening. Go and find how all the apostles died. You'll be surprised. All the apostles died. Others were bent, tied here. And then he say, confess that Satan is your friend, not Jesus. They say, no, 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 no. We saw him. He lives. They say, okay, we will burn you. That's fine. Burn them. Okay, you, we are crucifying you now. Our Christianity now here, I will tell you today, is, is not a good Christianity. When the challenges come, we reject Jesus. Many of us, when we come to church here, we come because we want bread. If bread is not there, God is not there. That's why many of you are being robbed very, very quick. By the time of the false prophet, when he comes here on earth here, he's going to rob many Christians. You know that? Because automatically we are looking on the sign and wonder. We are looking on what we think we know. But we cannot look beyond. I don't know if you're hearing me. So think about these apostles. They hold it, Peter, Peter, you see? Are you still following Jesus? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. We'll crucify you. No, 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 no. Don't crucify me like my Jesus. Crucify me upside down. Because Jesus is Lord. They crucify, he died. If, look at the shot. Can you see the shot? James, do you believe? Jesus is the same. Yes. We'll use this sword if we say, so peace you with the sword. Okay, I still believe you can do whatever you can do. Bah! Went to heaven. If somebody come here and say, uh, how many Christians are here holding AK-47? Many of you, you'll be entering this office here by the head. You don't even know how you stood from the chair. Some of you will be climbing this, this. You'll be there. Because you don't know where you're standing, you know. You don't believe that after you die here, there is more life there. Yeah? You'll be thinking about there's some eggs you left there. The cabbage you cook when you, you leave, when you come here. You'll be thinking too much about the account that you have got 25 friends there. And if now you die here, I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. We don't have that kingdom mentality. We are not having what? Kingdom mentality, whereby we don't care. We, we are trying to save our lives and we lose it. All the time we are trying to do what? To save our lives and we are losing it all the time. That's what is happening. When someone just comes, are you sure you are a Christian? You say, why are you saying this? So we are here to shoot all Christians. Can you see those people there? And there's nobody there. They just try to test you. Can you see those people? You look there, you say, yes, yes, sorry. Don't even shoot me. These people here, I don't know how I came here. They took me from home. I don't even understand what happened. This is a miracle. It's a miracle to find myself here. Because I... You understand what I'm trying to say? That is why we are lacking Christians who are committed, who are also confident about their way of love with working with the Lord. It's so difficult. Sometimes the sin, only sin, simple sin, follow us. So this is the mistakes that even the church now is can't preach sin. Stop sinning. Now, because already you find that whatever we are doing now is just for temporary. 
Simple thing. Your boyfriend says, I can't buy grocery. Simple grocery. So me, grocery. So are you still a Christian? No, I, I go to church only to please there because pastor want me to sing or to dance in the church. Eh? Eh. Okay, let me buy you grocery. If now you say you are a Christian and you want to be full-time Christian, I will never buy you grocery. Are you hearing me? Brother, sister say, yes. Uh, no, that pastor knows I'm not serious in the church. Uh, that's why I'm carrying on joining with you. I'll carry on joining with you as long as you buy grocery. If you stop, I will die. You forget that Jesus is the one who can, who can bless you. Some of you here, you don't know where you are standing. Can you ask your neighbor, are you sure you are a Christian? Can you look at the eyes there? <laughs> So, you understand why uh, we can be sad when we lose you, but we also have that courage of saying, we shall meet. Hallelujah. So, let's open the Bible. So, this introduction will help us today. Tell yourself and say, God want, I want God to help me. Can you clap hands for yourself because you are here? <laughs> to be honest, I, I began to study the word of God basing on our own situation and what will happen. So that's what we need to learn today. Are you hearing me? You can go home and read this chapter, but we'll read it here, some verses. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, from 26 to 39. But we won't read all verses. Are you hearing that? It says, Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. Can you see that? And what you hear in the air, preach on the housetop. 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the what? And body in a hand. Let's jump there and we go to this one. 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. And 33, but whosoever denies me before men, him I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. And 34, he said, do not think that I have come to bring what? Peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a short. And look at this verse here, 35. 35 is what is happening now. It says, for I have come to set a man against his father. In other words, this is going to be like fight. Okay, 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This is a challenge because we love our children. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Look at this verse 41. 40. 40. He who receives you receives me and he who receives me receives him who sent me. But I want you to read to 39. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to look unto our lives today and then we check that we have our souls. We have what? 
you have a soul. You are the soul. You are not the flesh. And then if we can check that, you realize that whatever that is happening around the, the, the flesh might be affecting your soul. Hallelujah. So this is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, our soul. Right now. Our soul. I've been checking this. I found that when Jesus was preaching to these people, he began to show them that the problem that is happening around us is fear. Fear is our enemy. Tell me about fear is your enemy. He began to speak about because of fear and your soul. Your soul will be tested to test if you are genuinely following God. Your soul will be what? Tested. Your soul will be tested. There are things that will be testing your soul so that when you overcome, you'll be able to save your soul. Because if we read here, Jesus was speaking about that we must fear the one who killed the soul and what? And the body in hell. In other words, in hell, when you live here, going to hell, you are still going to possess your body and what? And your soul. Therefore, this is a body that God will give you. Think about when you die here and then you leave the body here, but there's a body again that you're going to get there and a soul so that we'll be able to identify you. Like what is happening here, you know that you are being identified by what? By your body, not by your soul. No, so? So therefore, it means your body is covering your soul. Your body is covering what? Your soul. Say, my body is covering my soul. Listen, even in hell, your soul will be covered by the body. It means there will be a body that will be supplied to cover your soul, but it will be you. You will see it's yourself. There's a body that you'll be given. So Jesus was speaking about, yes, there is fear, 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 fear. This fear everywhere is there to challenge you if you are joining following Jesus Christ. So can you see now? If you are joining, it means you will save your soul. So Jesus said, he who loses his life for me will find it. Can you hear that? Meaning that he who loses life will still have a body and his soul in the other side. Hallelujah. But he who tried to save his life by fear, because many of us, we are afraid, we are afraid of whatever. That's how we act against the will of God. The reason why you act against the will, you are afraid of what will happen to your flesh. And you forget that there is a soul that you need to save. I'm sure you understand that. Tell somebody, say, my friend. Don't be afraid of what is happening to your flesh. Because you need your soul on the other side. So, Jesus spoke about things that will happen. He said, he's here to bring a shot. In other words, there will be a challenge of you and the family. He's here to bring what? A short, a daughter will fight mother, brother, whatever. So it means between you and your family, there will be a problem. So there are some things which are seven that I want to read for you. You can write them down, which will be our challenge of saving our soul. Are you hearing me? Number one, just write them down. Number one, world persecution. It means well, persecution will bring fear. Will bring what? Fear. So that you'll be challenged. You are going to be challenged in following Jesus Christ. 
and also to save your soul. World persecution. Number two, fearless consecration. Fearless consecration. If you want to sanctify yourself and you don't fear to lose. Like, let's give example, you want to fast. You know that when you fast, you lose your shape. Not so? So, but you can do anything as long as it satisfies your, your Father God. Hallelujah. You can still pray when it's not possible to pray. You can still fast when it's not possible to what? To fast. You can still give when it's not possible to what? To give. That is fearless consecration. Three, fearless faith. This is genuine faith. Genuine faith. In other words, you say, I don't care. I believe Jesus will do it. Like what happened to Job when the boils were all over his body? He had fearless faith. He says, my redeemer lives. I will see him by my eyes. Eh? So you can see that there is fearless faith. Number four, bold confession of Christ. In other words, you don't compromise or there is no hypocrisy. Because can you see that when the family is there, they can still challenge you. And in families, friends, neighbors, there are people we love most. But we need to stand bold and say, we know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number five, just write it down, is, yes, putting God first. Remember the Bible says, seek the kingdom, eh? and all shall follow. In other words, if there is something that we need to do and you find that another thing came, we say, hey, no, this doesn't matter. We want to follow Jesus Christ. We do it first. Jesus says, he who put a plow and look back is not fit for what? For my kingdom. In other words, there will be challenges that will make us to stop what we are doing and we do something else. Are you hearing that? So we must put God first. Tell everybody, put God first. The last one is deny yourself. That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, if you save your life, you will lose it. If you lose your life for me, you'll find it. Deny yourself, it means there are certain things your flesh say yes. But because if you say yes and you find it's contrary with the word of God, you won't be part of it. Are you hearing me? There are things which are good, but they are not part of you. There are things that are there which look good, but they fight your soul. Hallelujah. So these are the things, seven things that, you know, you are going to be challenged to save your own soul. In Hebrews 10, verse 39, the writer of the Hebrews says, we are not drawn back because we believe in the saving of our souls. We are not drawn back in Hebrews 10, verse 39. We are not like the ones who are going to die. When we put the plow, we don't look back. We carry on. So there are challenges in your life that can make you to turn back. You know, those who overcome are the ones who says, we are not drawing back, we are moving forward. You know, always cowards, they are on the back. When things are tough, they turn and run away. But here, you can see that when you are fearless, when you put God first, if God tells you, you won't go back. Are you hearing me? Tell me, my friend. When you are fearless, when you hear God, you won't go back. The reason why people, they go back and fall back, they end up having setback, is because they are trying to save their lives. Think about there's a promotion which is contrary to the word of God for you to get it. Or there are principles that are coming for you to get promotion. But when you look at those principles, you realize they don't go by the word of God. 
Somebody say, I'll promote you if you do one, two, three. And automatically you realize this is contrary to the word of God. Okay, I want to sell this to you, but don't tell that one. If you tell that one, therefore, they are going to say, to prosecute me. Automatically you know this thing is run out of way. It's fighting your soul. For you to save your soul, there are many things you can say no because you love what? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor and say, my friend, what are the challenges you are facing? There might be some challenges, but these are like temptations to mislead you, to get out of a way where you can find yourself standing and say, one day, I want to go to heaven. Because can you see Christianity nowadays? It's like, it's not this one we are of, of Peter, Paul, and other people. It's like we are coming to church to get a blessing, but after you get a blessing, you don't mind the one who blesses you. I'm sure you understand that. It's like everybody is just going around saying, I want a car, I want a house, I want a... But the moment you get it, you forget the one who did it. Because I believe as a Christian, when God blesses you, you hold him stronger. Is it possible? Is it possible for you? Is it impossible for you? If God bless you, what are you going to do? He's strengthening you. He's strengthening your testimony. Look at the book of Luke. Chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Let's look at this, what happened. The book of what? Chapter 16, 19 to 31. You go and read at home. It's a story of the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible says the rich man fed sometimesly all the time, wearing purple. By that time when you are rich, you wear purple. But, you know, the day came. Look at the life of Lazarus. He, the dogs comes around him and, and, and lick on his boys around him. He had sores around him. To extend that, there was nothing that even the rich man can offer. But look what happened there when the rich man died. Look when, what happened when Lazarus died. The Bible says he was carried. Eh? He was carried in heaven where there was Abraham and he sat on the bosom of Abraham. It means Abraham was here and he was sitting here. Are you hearing that? And look how, what happened. If you can reach there, you realize that the way the rich man was buried, it was really challenging everybody. Because the Bible says, he died and he was buried. They talk about burial. They don't talk about being carried. There are some people, when you go to their burials, you can really say, this person was buried. But the Bible says, already he was in hell, tormenting in hell. When he was busy tormenting in hell, the Bible says, he looked up because remember, this man was carried up, Lazarus. When you look up, you see Lazarus on top there. Because in hell, after you die, you still see, you still think. He remember, you can still remember. He can see Abraham. He can, are you hearing me? Eh? It means there is life after death. Tell your neighbor, there is life after death. Mind about your soul. He's, he look up there and see Lazarus. And he said, I know Lazarus. I know Abraham. This Abraham. Eh? He began to mind about what he's facing. And he began to think about the, the five brothers he left there. That, ah, this is a torment. Look here. Abraham, can you send Lazarus? Because he knew very well that Lazarus was nothing. He still wanted to send him on the other side. Send Lazarus to come and bring water, even a small water, to quench my throat because I'm in torment. There is torment on the other side. You could feel, you could see, you could hear, you could remember. Your soul is still the same soul that you are sitting here. Hallelujah. Tell my friend, mind about your soul. 
There are many things that are happening to you so that you forget that there is no life here. You are still on the other side. You are still going to go on the other side to give an account. You are still going to, to go on the other side to face what you are supposed to face. But you need to know that after you pass here, you, you remember the people you left home. You, you still remember the people you did what? You left home. You still remember, you, you can see, you can think. You can still, you, it is yourself. He went to Ephrathah when Abraham said, no, 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 we cannot send Lazarus here because between you and I here, there's a big space here. There's, I, mean, I mean, we have been sent, sent to a two different world. So he said, okay, please, please, uh, maybe you can send somebody. Eh? You can send somebody there and maybe if you send somebody from the dead, my brothers will believe. Look what Abraham said. He said, no, 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 no. There are Moses and the prophets there. They must listen to them. If they fail to listen to them, they will also come where you are. So, God raised people for our souls. Tell your neighbor. God raised people for our souls. We need to mind about that. We need to think about that. And we forget most of the time that when things are happening around us, we forget that one day we'll pass from this place. God has raised people from our souls, for, for our souls. If we read the book of Hebrews, we, we find something like that. In Hebrews verse 4, chapter 4, 10 to 12. Hebrews chapter 4, 10 to 12, we found something like this. That there's a word of God and it's the only one that search the intent of our hearts. The word of God we preach is the one that is sharpening us. It looks unto us and deal with us. I mean, you Christians, you must be in the church where the word of God is being preached because the word of God deals with your soul. Are you hearing me? It's as good as food from the shop deals with your body. But the word of God deals with your soul because it looks unto the intent of their thoughts. I mean, everything about the soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I say, my friend. You need the word of God all the time. To listen to the word of God. To sharpening to sharpen your destiny of your soul. Listen, if you read 3 John 2, you realize the Bible says, when your soul prospers, you prosper also in flesh. I mean, we are doing opposite. We are looking in the flesh, we are not looking in the souls. But it talks about where you, you need to prosper first is your soul. So that even your what? Your flesh will prosper. It's like seek the kingdom, all shall follow. The mistake we are doing, we are focusing on what we are seeing than what we cannot see. You can't see your soul. Therefore, there are more things that God wants to do in your life which you can't see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you look at that Hebrews 4, it talks about the word of God. It's a short, shaping on the other side. It means there are things in your body, in your soul, that must be cut off so that you live the way God wants you to live. There are things that Satan planted. Remember Jesus says, whatever that my father never planted in you will be uprooted. So you need the word of God to uproot that things. Are you hearing me? That's what my friend. There are things today that will be uprooted in your life. Because those are the things that devil is using to stop your life. Those are the things that can make you to go to hell also. You know, Satan, when you sleep, he come and plant things in your life. He plant things in your life. Satan is a planter. Eh? He's a planter. He plant fear. He plant doubt. He plant lack. Whatever you are facing is what Satan has planted. But tell yourself, I'm not looking on what I'm facing right now. I'm looking on what God has done in my life. Because there are many things he can do in future. Like what David said. He says, yes, I can see Goliath, but I remember where I come from. Are you hearing me? You can still see the challenge, but remember where God took you. It means you can still overcome what you are facing. This can help you to hold your character. Tell your neighbor. 
whatever you are facing is challenging your character, the character that God wants in your life. Your soul is important. If we carry on, you know, looking unto our character, whether our character, they don't defy Jesus Christ as Lord. I'm telling you, we will be blessed without measure. You can be poor now, but it will be for a testimony. Because our God will never leave us. He will make us example. What is important? He wants to save us. So we must not save ourselves. Let's believe in what he can do when he's saving us. By following him in a way that we are like stupid. Because if you remember, there was a fool that gather everything to himself. And the Bible says, after he gather, he say, my soul, rest now. I want to eat. You remember? And the Bible says, that night his soul was required. Hallelujah. So you can see that we can spend time gathering, gathering. And you find that whatever we are gathering will never save our soul. We can spend time, many of us, we are so busy with things that are really affecting our souls, putting us in a cage where we cannot escape. We need to deal with our souls, busy understanding that where we are going is heaven. We are not here to play. We are not here to stay. We know where we come from, where he took us and washed us by the blood of Jesus Christ. But now we are going where he is calling us to go. I don't know if you hear me. We need Christians who are saying, I'm tired of the world and now I'm here to serve God and I'm not looking back. I don't mind what will happen. My friends can leave me. Family can leave me. Anybody can reject me, but I will hold on to Jesus Christ until to the end. Are you hearing me? How many of you are trying to do something like that? If you are, if you are trying to do something like that, can you just wave your hand? Because what is important, listen, what is important is not to pray something happen. Huh? Because there are some people who are using other things and they are getting what they want. What is important is your relationship with what? With Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You need to strengthen it in a way that you don't look back. Because you know very well that you can rather lose money, lose friends, lose whatever, but you know very well at the end. Eh? Your Redeemer lives. You know at the end. You will laugh at the end. And you will enjoy at the end. If you do that, God will show up. Let me prophesy you. From now on, when you are dealing with your spiritual life, holding Jesus, whatever you pray, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The scripture that I'm talking about was Luke 12, 12, verse 20. Luke 12, verse 20. Your soul will be required. So, what, what about the things you gather? You gather for who? Who's going to take that? I saw many people in my village who were very rich. They had many things. They died. Everything was finished. Can you see when you are gathering, you have business that they, they die. Everything was what? You can still gather what you can gather in a wrong way, but you will die. Everything will work. You finish. Your soul is supported. Hallelujah. Look at this verse. Maybe we can continue. If we read Psalm 69 from verse 10, we find that fasting, fasting is there to chasten our soul. Fasting. I'll tell you why. That's what you can try to do sometimes alone. When you want to deal with your, your flesh, to make your flesh weak, are you hearing me? Automatically you, do, you use fasting. You are chastening your what? Your soul. Your soul. When you are busy fasting, do your fasting. Automatically, you know, can I give an example? Can I give an example? How many of you exercise? Just lift up your hands. Those who exercise running. Yes, you exercise. I think the best exercise is fasting. <laughs> That is the best one 
Fasting is the best exercise. I will tell you why. Many of you, you are running on the road because your stomach is what? It's full. When you are, your stomach is empty, you can't exercise. Can you do push-up when your stomach is empty? Uh, I mean, some of you, you are, you are shocking. Because now you eat meat, and then, and then, and papa, you begin to say, hey, it's like I'm becoming fat. That's why you begin to... <laughs> no one exercise unless he sees something wrong in his body. So, but there's no one who's dealing with his soul. If now you chasten yourself by fasting, you say, there's something wrong I'm seeing. Let me fast. Because there are things you can't do when you are hungry. Eh? You hear me? When you are hungry, can you watch movie? So now, many of you are watching movie because you are not fasting. There are some things you are watching, things that you, do, you are doing, is because you are eating too much. So the more you fast, is the more you are chastening what? Remember the Bible says that because God loves us, he chastens us. To chasten is to make it straight. If you want to make your soul straight, fast. Hallelujah. Stop riding on the road. The car will hit you. I mean, stop doing that. Running on the road, the car will hit you. Sometimes when you are running like this, you can find yourself entering the road and the car, you're not even aware of the car. It will hit you. But when you fast, you will start three days. If you fast three days and you are praying only, I mean, you will lose if you want to sleep. Don't eat small. Eh? It's not fasting. It's dieting. And dieting means dying time. Can you touch somebody and say, my friend? When was the last time you fast? Uring. What does he say? Yeah. Okay, look at this one. In Proverbs 21, 23. That's another thing you can do. In Proverbs what? 21, 23. He who keeps his mouth and his tongue he keeps his soul. Mind about what you are talking. Tell your neighbor, mind about what you are talking. The Bible says, your speech must be seasoned with salt. In other words, you must speak the word of God. So that when you pray, it will happen. I will give you an example. Whatever you will be saying during the day, are you hearing me? Before you kneel down to pray, it will come back to you. Are you hearing me? What you were saying, say, speaking the whole day. By the time when you are going to pray, it's the one that comes back to you and make you tired. The reason why some of you can pray for long is because you are talking too much during the day. You have wasted your energy. But if now you can talk the word of God, are you hearing me? You like you are refiring yourself. Eh? You are doing what? Refiring yourself. You are, there is more energy you are receiving. There is more anointing you are receiving. When you pray, you will be flowing and something will happen. If I can ask you, many of you, when I'm looking at you, you are not even praying. I'm, uh, I'm not judging you. I'm not judging, but I want you to show I'm telling you the truth. When I'm looking at you, your prayer life has been affected. You know why? Because there are many things that Satan is doing around you, around your body, and you are concentrating on what Satan is doing, and you forget that what is important, you need, you need to focus on your soul. Are you hearing me? Satan will bring this, you worry, bring this to talk about, bring this to think about. Satan is bringing many things around you to take your focus and to give you direction. But if we begin to say, no, 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 I can't do this. I want to hold my Jesus. I have seen what devil has done, but I believe of where I'm going. We need Christians who believe in their destiny, who understand that God is taking them forward. How many of you believe that this year you are going to be an example? If you believe you are going to be an example, it's happening right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, 
Whatever that is happening in your flesh is temporal. Is what? Don't focus on it. Don't focus on what the devil is doing. He wants to take your attention. He just wants to affect your focus. Within Christians who knows that they are going to heaven. Whatever that devil is doing on them is just to close their eyes. But Jesus is opening your eyes so that you can go on the other side. Are you hearing me? From today, nothing will stop you. You will meditate the word of God and your ways will be prosperous. In the name of Jesus. Ask somebody, say, my friend, are you a Christian or what? Because many of you now, you are focusing on the pain. On the... Remember, listen. Can you see yourself? Can you see your body? Can you just, just look at yourself. Look at your body. Look at your body. Look at yourself. This body, will, you will leave it here. Somebody say you're ugly. He's talking about the body that you will leave here. And the Bible says you are, you are wonderfully, fearfully made by God. So why do you become angry? When somebody say you are ugly, you say, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. you are actually really ugly. You are right. When someone says you are, you, are, you are stupid, you say, yeah, it's your eyes. You are right. Because somebody is judging you according, are you hearing me? According to his understanding. So now you are busy thinking and you are affecting your soul. You are trying to save yourself. No, me. You can't talk. Me. Me. Not you. It's not all about you. It's all about Jesus who died for you. Paul says, it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. So if somebody is talking about you, he's in your past. Are you hearing me? You are in your future. As I say, my friend, when somebody insults you, what do you say? So temptation to Christians are useless. Can I say it again? Temptations to Christians are what? Are useless. Temptations are for baby Christians. Because you know Satan will tempt you. Automatically, you can't talk about him. You just know this, uh, this, I can't talk about it. But a Christian who grow up, he move from temptation and live a victorious life. Temptation to Christians are what? Are useless. It's something you can meet all the time. The moment you see it, you just say, oh, this is foolish. This is what devil is doing. These are useless things that Satan is doing. And I'm overcoming this, I'm going on the other side. Whatever devil is doing on you, don't focus on it because it's there to search for your soul and to arrest your soul. And the moment you are arrested there, you are in danger. I don't know if you hear me. Stop talking about what you are facing. Start talking about what God can do. We need Christians who can start talking about what God can do. You may not be seeing where you are going, but you can still perceive that you are moving forward. No, so? So don't hold Satan and his, his things. Carry on trusting God. And God is giving you hope. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you believe that today you are seeing where you are going? Are you seeing where you are going? Yes. Therefore, temptations are useless. Temptations are what? Are useless. Because temptations are, are brought by the one who is useless too. Devil is the tempter. Look at the last verse. If we read Lamentation 3, Lamentation 3. 25 to 26. Lamentation. 3. I want us to read that verse. 20, what? 5 to 26. Did you find it? The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Can you see that? It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Today, you are going to meet the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is good. Tell me, but the Lord is good. As I'm seeking him quietly. Today, I will see the salvation of the Lord. God wants to save your soul. Hallelujah. Are you ready for that? Are you ready? Listen to this. 
There's something that is not written here. It's what I perceive. Can I tell you? Eh? Before God blesses you, he, he automatically check, he check your soul whether you are fit for the blessing. It's not what we are talking about here. But I want to tell you that. Automatically, are you fitting that blessing? So the more you prepare yourself, are you hearing me? Living right, dealing with yourself. You are asking God for a better responsibility. The reason why many of us we are facing stagnation. It's not because we are weak. But God is allowing us to be checked by those, by those stagnation, by those pains. God is using, is allowing them, those people who check, who bring those foolish temptation. And God has allowed it so that we will fit the blessing. There's a blessing that is coming that already God has placed in front of you. But before we reach there, we are going to be checked. Checked. Challenged. Challenged all the time. Until we say, Lord, now we believe you only. Are you hearing me? That's where we'll be glorified. There are some people here, you are facing turmoils, challenges, shame, poverty sickness and sorrow but all these are there they are searching for your soul they are just there searching for your soul so you wait quietly waiting quietly it means you don't even talk about what you are facing you glorify God and what you are waiting for it will happen today are you ready for that? Let us stand. Let us stand if you are ready. So, I won't waste time. If that is the case, check, are you saved? That's the first thing. Are you a Christian? Because that's what matters. Are you hearing me? That's what, what? Mercy. There was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There my body and soul found liberty. Oh, you know the song, sing it. May see there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. I want Jesus. If you want Jesus, you want to be saved, please, you can run here and I'm waiting for you. You need to believe unto Jesus who saved the soul. Come. I'm waiting for you. When we are singing, don't look at anybody. Look at yourself. God loves you. May see there was grace and grace was free. Multiplied to, to me, me. there my bed and soul found me, but it
just multiplied to me. for this ones who are here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. For come here, you pray with them a prayer of accepting Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we just pray, clap hands and rejoice for them, you know, the, the, the direction they have taken. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah going to raise your hands and follow me and close your eyes, follow me in prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight for opening my eyes of understanding. Thank you, Jesus, for the truth that I've heard from your servant tonight. I accept you to be the Lord and the Savior of my soul. Live in me and through me. Give me the grace and the power to live above sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the family of God. Uh, listen, on this class, we, are, we have it all the time on Tuesday. You can come to this class, have your Bible book. Also, if you don't have a Bible, you can carry your book, you write. Uh, because now you are starting a journey. You need to grow. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. Can we clap hands for them? God bless you. God bless you. You can see that. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we sing a song? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I wanted to play this, okay? Let's leave this, okay? Let's, I'm leaving you, ne? Next time I will show you. Don't think you are quiet because uh, come, po, come here, come here and take the mic tender. We sing, we worship God, and because this guy is quiet here, nobody here. Uh, give tender. Let's sing the song. Let's worship uh, as long as I'm around here. Don't. Yeah. 
keep watching. Charis.